Hey guys, my name is Dave, and welcome to another episode of History Talk, where I discuss random icons, sometimes random, or groups, and discuss what they did in the past and how they impact me, specifically, today. Now, a lot of people have a tendency to know animated characters or live characters like instantaneously, but then you mention the creator and the, pers the person that you're talking to will go, who is that? There's one specific one that sticks out to me for a reason not many people might know or not might not know, depending on the person, and that person is Max Fleischer. Now Maxwell Fleischer was one of it was he was one of the first animators to ever exist. Not many people know who he is though. However, let me throw a few characters that many people know your way. Betty Boop, Superman the animated series, Popeye. That probably grabbed a lot of people's attention because I throw this these particular words out and people are like, wait, I know those series, but who's Max? In a sense, not many people know, but to be more direct on who he is specifically, there was Maxwell Fleischer and there was Walt Disney. Around the same time they animated. However... Walt Disney aimed more towards a family-type audience, where Max, he aimed more towards, like, an audience that could handle, like, dark animation. Kind of R-rated, even though that rate didn't, rating didn't exist until the late 80s. Um, but what's interesting to me about this particular <coughs> creator... Um, is the fact that it, it was kind of the rivalry between Walt Disney and Maxwell Fleischer that kind of piqued the interest towards me. When I learned about this, that's where things really started to catch my attention. Now, there's not a lot of history towards this particular character just because, because of how little publicity this man's animations got in his early years. Yes, maybe his company went on for a while, but he himself kind of dropped really quickly. Overpowered by Disney animations by a long shot. So how in the world would somebody like this, Pioneer, impact me specifically today. Took some thought for me once I've read about this man, but in a sense, he did have an impact on the type of animations that are done today that aren't directly Walt Disney, and how each individual animated show made for kids that you watch has some kind of either dark or adult humor just sneaked into it somehow. And it's something that after a while I learned to appreciate and it's kind of like a, a hide and seek type of thing. Um, and it, it, it's something that I've grown to appreciate because it made, rather than Max Fleischer ma making him look like the man that never existed, more like the underdog of animations and to me specifically sometimes feeling like an underdog even if under some circumstances I may or may not be one um, it, it makes me appreciate uh, the man and how, how much he's done towards whether it's the animated uh, the, the group of animators or just people IRL it's something that, even though it's not thought of very often, it's something that you can approach and go, I cheer for the underdogs. Well, then you'd be cheering for this person. 
and I mean, if it's impacting my own personal life in a sense where it's not just a group type thing, well, let's put it this way. Max Fleischer's first animated series was very, very, very dark, but not in a way that kids couldn't watch it. It wasn't directly meant for kids, but if kids were to watch it, they wouldn't, like, have psychological problems. That's, in a sense, kind of what I like about a lot of animations today, and some in the past. For example, Invader Zim. Unfortunately, that show got cancelled two seasons in, however, it takes on the same kind of idea. Very dark, but definitely still to a specific degree enough to where it doesn't cause psychological problems, still can be watched by kids. Wouldn't recommend it, but... <laughs> and same for Max Fleischer's original animations. It still would work. And it's something that I've seen get adapted into modern day society as well. I think a better example of this kind of stuff and Amber, uh, my fiance who used to watch these all the time and still sometimes does, uh, Family Guy, um, American Dad, Wait, what South are they? Park. Um, these kind of animations, they have these kind of dark humors in them, but not to a degree where if a kid were to watch it, they would go, Wait, what? What? Like, that kind of thing was birthed somewhere. And that was back when the animated pioneers were around. When, once again, Max Fleischer was, in a sense, in his prime. Now, at its core, I have brought up how, in groups, it can impact me but how personally do I feel about this? I've said it impacts me in a way where it's like, makes me kind of feel like, an, like underdogs mean a lot more IRL, but to me specifically, how, how would it impact me in my daily activities in any kind of way? I would say it makes me look at anim, it, when I first learned about this man, it made me look at animations a lot more differently and with a lot more respect with a completely different perspective. Now, as you guys heard, Amber's already, she, she's she been in the room throughout the whole thing. For those of you who don't know, it's because the video you guys are going to see in a couple hours if you do watch the gaming content on this channel, um, she was with me for that. And we just finished having dinner, which we actually had after that, so these aren't exactly made in chronological order. So that's because of the vocals, and I, I, I was talking about the different animated series that you used to watch. Oh. But, as far as all that kind of stuff goes, Pioneers are very important. And Max Fleischer, along with Walt Disney, was one of the originals. Making him, as unknown as he is, a very big deal. Without him, I can guarantee... Half of animations that exist nowadays... Wouldn't exist? Pretty much, yeah. They would not exist. And if they did, they would probably have a completely different feel to them. As far as mindsets go, like mine, well, there would be a harder... It would be harder to compare. For me, specifically, I'm the kind of person who's kind of mentally always into, like, family-friendly animated stuff in case the games on this doesn't don't give it away or the things they talk about, or that. If none of that gives it away. <laughs> well, yeah. I've never really been one for high-ranked adult-type stuff. Even Amber can agree to this statement. But even with that said, I still have an impact by this man. When I first found out about him, I went back in time 
to when the, these original animations were created. When Betty Boop was first created. And even before that. When I watched these, I started to grow an appreciation for an animation style, an animation genre that I did not know existed on its own. An animation genre that made me appreciate the idea that the things I watch always seem to have this hidden something in them. And as I said, like I said earlier, and I started watching through some more recent animated series that weren't like meant for more adults than kids. And I found that that was way more accurate than I was originally expecting. However, having a core for this kind of stuff, for this kind of idea is actually more comforting to me than a lot of people might think. For me, animation can be many different things. And the people who make them, well, it has to come from something. The minds of these individuals, the creativity behind it, Show the advancement of the mind when it comes to creativity in general. Now, yes, this does stretch out. That particular statement can stretch out to live stuff and even, like, books, TV shows, um, comic strips, games, you name it. These amount of... This amount of creativity gets a lot of appreciation from me, especially when there's like a story behind it, even if it's really meticulously hidden. And I found that this original creator, now I keep saying that he emphasized on others in the future, in the more now currently what we would call the present, um, emphasized on that these current animations, having all this hidden, more adultish, content. That's because back then, I looked through some of the content and this, even though his animations were darker, Max did the same thing. Mr. Fleischer did a very similar thing. Look through the animations and you kind of find things that if you're not looking at all, you won't catch, but if you're not looking, it'll be leaning more towards kids, even though, again, as I said before, the animations aren't directly for kids. But if you're looking, yeah, keep kids away from that. <laughs> um, now, I keep reverting away from the idea of how this impacts me. I've said yes, it makes me look at current animations differently and it allows me appreciation for you know these kind of searches but Disney animation does the same thing except it's a bit more lighthearted look for the Mickey Mouse ears kind of thing so what differentiates away from what Disney does that he did that does impact me now this one took a lot of thinking because most of the things Max Fleischer did, and the company still did up until it went bankrupt, a lot of it was the same, similar to Walt Disney. But there was one teeny tiny difference. The fact that his animations could actually be related to you cannot, I mean, if you can relate to anything, any of the Disney animations, good for you, but it's not as likely. Anything that went on in, I forget the company name, I think it was like Flasher Co., actually. Um, I might be wrong. 
but one thing that that studio did consistently, every single thing that was done, psychological or not, could be related to in one way or the other. Whereas at the same time, while he was doing, while Max Fleischer was doing animations that could be related to, and still can to this date, if you can find him in the right place, which let's be honest, most of the time that place is YouTube. Walt Disney was off making animations about a mouse screwing over a dog, I think. What? Pete. Mickey Mouse at the time was a. He he wasn't a it's good. It's a cat. Pete, Pete is a cat. It is Pete's a cat. Yes, he's a gigantic cat. I can never tell. Pete's too big and fat to tell what he is at all. Anyway, he's like my brother's that's, cat. That's 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 kind of off-brand topic. Anyway, <laughs> while Walt Disney was making light-hearty, just for the heck of it, mischievous content. And just for kicks and giggles, Max Fleischer was over on the other end of things making very, very relatable content. Now, yeah, not a lot of people watched it then. Not a lot of people watch it now. But when I do, when I did, I should say, There's a lot I could have related to, and that's something I can definitely appreciate, especially with the stuff I do on a daily basis now. I find I love finding things when I'm able to relate to them, in some way or the other. And finding out about this character from, like, the 1920s, 1930s, it was actually kind of refreshing. But... One way or the other, I'm going to leave it at that, because unfortunately there's not much that can be said about this man. There wasn't much recorded. He didn't have very many animations that he did, unfortunately, because he went bankrupt pretty quickly, especially for an animated studio, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, do you have any animations or animators that you can relate to? Let me know in the comments below. Um, want to check out any other episodes in this particular series, click the link on one side of my head, but if you would rather find something else that might be of interest to you on this channel, click the link on the other side and you might find what you're looking for. Uh, if you have not checked the channel at all, out at all yet, uh, click the link in the description below Tell or to the, the thing here. Um, in the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for watching this episode of History Talk, guys, and I hope to see all of you in another one. Bye for now.